Welcome to the Orthodontics and in Interview Podcast, where Farouk brings you closer to the experts in orthodontics so we can hear their story and learn from their experiences with your host, Farouk Ahmed. Welcome to this episode of Orthodontics in Interview. It's my absolute pleasure to bring you Kleber Morales from Salvador in Brazil. So a bit of background about today's guest. Kleber is a professor in orthodontics and he's based at the Instituto Primera Cursos, which is in Salvador, Brazil. Kleber is not only a professor, he is a teacher and a really dynamic educator. Kleber has 36,000 followers on Instagram, over 460 posts, 51,000 plays on YouTube, and 6,500 followers on Facebook. For myself, this is a real meeting of a giant. Kleber is an inspiration to me when it comes to education and how to explain concepts and grasp them. So Kleber, welcome to Orthodontics and Interview. Hello, my friend Farouk. It's a very, very big pleasure for me to be here. And uh, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to have this chat with you. I can call this an interview because we are both, we are friends just talking about orthodontics. And I'm very excited to talk about this, this field that I love very much, which is orthodontics and teaching orthodontics. Okay. Amazing, amazing. And again, I thank you so much for Kleber to agreeing to this interview. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to, to finding out more about you and, and just how you function and work. It's going to be it's going to be eye opening for me. Um, so a little bit more about Kleber. So he's got an interest in biomechanics for you guys who have seen his videos. If you haven't, please do check them out on Instagram, or on Facebook. Uh, just Google Kleber Morales Orthodontics and you'll find his his information will come up. He's got a keen interest in temporary anchorage devices, interarch elastics, orthognathic surgery, and is currently developing a, a concept of orthodontic practice related to the line of force, which is entitled Centrix System. So kind of what I want to start with, Kleber, is to get to the crux of your education. What, what's led you to produce these short educational videos in orthodontics? Oh, very, very good question. Now, you know, my friend, uh, these short videos that I post on social media, they are uh, re the result of teaching or uh, teaching work of approximately 20 years, my friend. I started making these video presentations to try to explain to my students in a more visual way how orthodontic biomechanics works three-dimensionally, three you know? Well, Mm -hmm. I can say that it, it started doing this. I started doing this because of my own difficulties. You know, it is very difficult for me to understand how orthodontic bio biomechanics works only through uh, those explanations with drawings or written, or written on a paper. So I imagine how to explain those things to my students. So when I started doing these videos to my classes, people started understanding more what I'm talking about, what was orthodontic biomechanics about. So that that uh, gave me this, this spark, you know, that this is what I want to do, to try to explain people how things work in my mind, how things work when I do this kind of uh, orthodontic movement. And this is something that for me is important because it fills my gaps, you know, it is something that I had in the past when I was in, most, in my post-graduation uh, program. I had this kind of difficulties, you know. I didn't understand exactly how things worked because I couldn't see. And I'm, I'm very visual, and this is what I do. I try to explain for my students the way I think it would be have it would have been been explained for me in the past. So this is. Just something simple, but I think it helps a lot. Kleber, I think that's such an interesting thing, that it was the fact that you didn't understand something that well that led you to produce these videos that are educating so many orthodontists around the world. That, that's the idea that you, you kind of you learn to teach and you, you teach to learn, uh, and those processes mix in together. Kleber, on the same idea about the, the mechanics that you use, how, how would you describe your treatment philosophy when it comes to orthodontics and clinical practice? Well, uh, 
I imagine that uh, my treatment, or a good treatment philosophy, is to be as simple and effective as possible, Farouk, you know, uh, uh, with the lowest financial and biological cost for our patients. What I mean is to start with the simplest option and move up steps of complexity whenever necessary. But we don't have to start with the most expensive or the most shiny mechanics because, because, because here in Brazil, you know, we don't have uh, a wealthy country here. And we have my students, for example, they work in different places. There are places where they work where people cannot afford for expensive biomechanics, expensive appliance or devices. So I think it's good to start with the simplest mechanics. So we go up if necessary, if necessary, but we don't start doing that uh, shiny mechanics. So I try mm -hmm. to explain simply for my, my students and with with my patients, also with my patients, that I can do that with, for example, elastics. If I can use elastics and my patient is uh, uh, motivated enough to, to use the elastics, I don't start with TEDs, for example. If elastics are applied for that case, in spe that specific case, and it can, do, uh, uh, it can benefit that patient, so I start with that. Then if, when my patient don't use it, when my patient can't wear the, the elastics, so I go to another option. I start, I start saying, we're going through this kind of treatment plan. We start with elastics. And if you don't wear the elastics, if you don't uh, do what I'm saying to you to do, I'm going to uh, move up and I'm going to do another treatment planning using, for example, mini implants, mini plates, or extra ovular mini implants. So they are more expensive, so they are more invasive. Do you want to do that? And most of the, the in most of the cases, my patient understand what I have to offer to them, and they go with me in this kind of thinking, you know? They go, in most of the cases, they use the elastics when the elastics are applied, and they wear the elastic when the, the elastics are indicated. And if I, I don't see this, I don't see in their faces, I don't see in their eyes that they're going to, to wear the elastics. I go, of course, I eliminate this option and I go to another option. But this is my philosophy. Start with the simplest thing first, then you move on, then you move up uh, in the complexity uh, scale, if I can say that. I, I think that's a very interesting approach because you have different tools in your armamentarium that you will still get the same result, but you use different things to get there. And I think that shows quite a dynamic individual, clearly, who knows how to use different tools. If you only have one tool, of course, we're going to do one thing. So it works great for a case, but not for all cases. And I think what I'm hearing from you, Clever, is that actually you could probably deal with every malocclusion or all the malocclusions out there because you've got such a range of tools to get you there. Exactly, my friend. Uh, mm -hmm. When I, in some of my presentations, Farouk, I begin with a, a, a quote attributed to Abram Maslow, uh, who says, "If all you have is a hammer, everything looks like a nail." So, you yeah. did you you said exactly what I wanted to say. I'm sorry, I'm not. I, I don't have the skills in English to say everything like I'd, I'd like to say, like I say in Portuguese. But you did it for me, you know. And <laughs> when I do that, when I do this kind of uh, thinking, when I try to explain people, what I say is that you have to have in your armamentarium all the tools you have to you need in order to uh, benefit your patient, and do that. Everything you need is to understand the case and use one of those tools that you have in your armamentarium. And it doesn't have necessarily to be the most expensive of that. In the contrary, you have to start with the more, with the simplest, with the more, um, the cheapest, and you go on if the patient don't go with this this first treatment planning. Um. Clever, just asking some other questions now about orthodontics. So aligners are very much in vogue at this point in time. So what's your thoughts? Are you a yes or a no type of guy when it comes to aligners? Yes, yes. Absolutely yes. <laughs> I love aligners. Aligners, they may be extremely effective. They may be extremely efficient solutions in cases that they are well indicated, you know. However, mm -hmm. for me, the best way to deal with, the, with them today, nowadays, is knowing how to make the right indication for the case. Uh, 
I do not mm. believe in very complex treatments with aligners. Uh, even though I have an aligner company, I, I own an aligner company here in Brazil, but I do not believe in doing this kind of treatment and very complex treatment with aligners. So uh, not because they are not effects, they are, but because in the end, the treatment becomes very long and very expensive and with many variables. So I prefer to use the aligners for very specific situations in my clinical practice. Uh, that's probably why my aligners cases are 100% in office. In office. Mm -hmm. I do all my aligners cases because I do just the cases that that uh, I can do, and I do uh, sometimes hybrid situations, starting with fixed appliance, then going to aligners, going back to fixed appliance, and I try to make this this clear for my patients. I don't do, and if I'm not satisfied with the result, if I'm not satisfied with the outcome, you are going to use a fixed appliance for a certain period of time and I don't know for three months for six months but I want mm -hmm. to do the best for my patients so this is how I think about aligners and I think they will increase with time they will be more effective with time but nowadays if we do if we choose for the right patient for the right case we can do this uh, with a hundred percent of effectiveness you know Mm, that's so interesting and again I still like the the basis of your your mechanics and also your opinion on aligners is that you won't compromise on the outcome so if you're yes. not going to deliver it with aligners you'll deliver it some other means and that shows to me again perhaps the the clinician that you are is one of no compromise with the outcomes and I think that's that, that's something to definitely inspire to and to gain more skills so we can do that right so the different settings costs prices materials Ooh. Uh, the actual uh, appliance we're using and still being able to deliver. Um, Kleber, what's been your lockdown hobby? We've had such frequent lockdowns. I believe you're in your second lockdown now in Brazil. <laughs> yes. um, but what, what is your lockdown hobby? Oh, well, since the beginning uh, of this lockdown here in Brazil, uh, I dedicate myself to finish writing my book. I, I told you I'm writing a book and I'm trying to finish it, which is something really very difficult to do to finish a book in orthodontics. It's almost yeah. impossible for me, Farouk, because I always see things to do. I always see things to complete. But anyway, I believe that I managed to progress a lot in this material. And now I have dedicated myself, my, myself to putting all the images in order, inserting the links to the videos, uh, because uh, it is a book that contains video inside, contains uh, links to, Facebook, to, to, to YouTube to see what I'm saying and that uh, specific part of the book. So this is something that takes a long time, and I really have devoted a lot of time to that. Uh, besides that, I also spend a lot of time dedicated to my family, it, which is very good. We spent a lot of time at, at home together, right? So, and that was very interesting. That's very, very interesting experience. Sometimes stressful, sometimes very pleasant, but very different from what we were used to do. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got a phrase in the UK and it's called cabin fever. It's where you've been in, in an in a enclosure for a very long time with somebody and you just things start to go a little bit crazy. And I think we've all had a bit of cabin fever under lockdown. You know, we like our partners, but I hope, and our kids. But actually under this kind of pressurized cabin, you know, sometimes things can get a bit off. Uh, yeah. But it's interesting that, you're, that, that how orthodontics still per percolates into your hobby which shows yeah. you've got such a such a this isn't a, just a job this is something you really do enjoy that the first hobby i i, I asked you about ended up being orthodontics again yeah um, <laughs> clever where do you stand on the on the, de the decision between a coffee or a tea what would you go for wow my friend here in brazil coffee Definitely coffee. In most of houses here in Brazil, it's not counts, it's not customary to drink tea daily, you know. But coffee, oh, on the other hand, coffee is really a national passion. The day for me, it doesn't not, doesn't start until I have drank I have drunk a delicious Brazilian coffee. I would like okay. to know a little more about the culture of tea. I would like really like to know, but I I don't know. I will have time. I, I hope for for that on our next trip to to the UK. But nowadays, I don't know much about tea. My wife, she uh, lived in the UK for 
for like one year or so and she loves co uh, tea and she knows much more about mm -hmm. tea than I do but I, I, I really I'm a coffee guy <laughs> Clever, when you come to London, I'm going to take you to the best tea houses we have around here. I'm going to convert you into being a tea man. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to be my job. Good, uh, good. And you, can tell me, and, you can, and you can tell me how braces work. We'll have a really equal exchange of information taking place. My expertise versus yours. Um, Clever, okay. what's your favorite? I know you've been in Salvador now for some time, but what's your favorite bit about Salvador? What do you enjoy about it? I really love the city. I really love Salvador. In fact, uh, yesterday we celebrated here 473 years since the, the foundation of the city. Salvador, I don't know if you know, is, is a historic city here in Brazil. One of the first cities uh, founded here in Brazil with lots of beautiful places to visit. Uh, it's, it's located in the south, southeastern Brazil. And it's a multicultural and multicolored city, Farouk. It's, uh, we have these backgrounds, uh, these African backgrounds. We have a lot of colors. It's a colorful city here. Uh, the nature that surrounds the city is very beautiful. So I think it's really a place worth visiting. And when you come here in Brazil, you stay with me and I will show this, this city. And I think you'll fall in love with this beautiful and colorful city of Salvador. I cannot wait. I cannot wait, Tabba. I cannot wait at all. <laughs> Good. Um, with with um, the the people that you inspire, like myself and other listeners, um, it's always Thanks. interesting to know, Tabba, what's led you to your position and who's been your inspiration. So who's inspired you when it's come to orthodontics? Well, this is a very easy question for me, you know, Farouk. Uh, without a doubt, my ex-profession professor and mentor, uh, Dr. Omar Gabriel da Silva Filho. For me, really an orthodontist without defects, you know, a fantastic human, human being who never tired of teaching with all the patients in the world and with a willingness to, to spread knowledge and uh, that was truly inspiring. Unfortunately, he has been ill for some years now and does not teach or practice orthodontics anymore, but his teachings are still with me and I'm going, I'm, I'm carrying it uh, for my life, okay? And I'm tr I try, always try to follow in his footsteps, not only as a teacher, but as a human being. He was amazing. You know, what's interesting, Kleber, is that as I do these interviews, is that people like yourself who are, who are giants in the field of orthodontics, there is always an, a, a person who that they are aspiring to or who has inspired them that they are trying to reach towards. And that's great that we now know your story. And hopefully the people who are now listening to this uh, and aware of Kleber's work will also now try and reach towards what you've gone. Achieve. And we'll just continue to keep these ideas going through the field of orthodontics, which is a really exciting profession for somebody who's relatively new really? to it, uh, and one where we have people like yourself who are inspirational. So it's great that we continue this tradition uh, within our field. Thanks. Um, Claire, but I just want to conclude this interview with asking, with asking one final question. That's more advice, really. What one piece of advice would you give to orthodontists out there? Well, I, I don't know if I can give advice. It seems a little bit, I don't know. Uh, but uh, let's, let's try to, to separate this. For an orthodontist who is starting his career now, I would say, Farouk, that the most important thing is of all is to understand that knowledge is not in social media, but in good books and papers. Please don't take those images and think you can do that at, at, exactly like that, you know? Because sometimes what we see in social, social media, it looks perfect. And orthodontics is not perfection. Orthodontics is, is struggle is a very, very, very hard effort, effort to, to, uh, to know things, to understand things. So please don't take social media as a mentor. It's the most important thing. Never stop studying. Never stop studying. It's more, more, more than important. It's vital for your career. For those orthodontists uh, that, wa that who already has a long time of work, of clinical experience, I would say that it's essential not to go into all the new fashion, the new fashion material, the new, new fashion device that comes and go all the time in our practice, you know. 
yes, it, it's important always to be open to changes, but the, the, that they can they, that can, they come from a reliable source, from mm. a well known and and sometimes so little recognized evidence based science. Please do not go every time something new. Uh, flashes in front of you, please don't think that is so beautiful that you have to go to jump into this new uh, device, to jump in this new uh, philosophy of treatment. And finally, mm -hmm. for those orthodontists like me, like myself, who are not, not uh, for, for a long time in the career, maybe some of them are disappointed, perhaps unmotivated with their practice. I would say that orthodontist is for me, the most beautiful specialty of the industry and that there will always be space for those who practice this beautiful profession with quality. So don't mm -hmm. be discouraged. Don't, don't be discouraged and continue to practice good orthodontics. And above all, uh, and that goes for everyone, I would say that the best way to practice the industry is to treat your patient as you would treat your children. You can't go wrong if you do it that way, okay? Well, Kerber, that's just uh, so inspirational. And it shows that you are a true teacher at heart, Kerber, because there you've addressed all spectrums of the orthodontic audience, from the new qualified to the ones who are experienced, and it's inspirational. Kerber, I'd like to thank you very much for being part of this interview in orthodontics, and I very much look forward to seeing your textbook coming out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Farouk, for inviting me to do this conversation with you. And I'm very, very uh, pleased to, to talk to your audience. And uh, uh, I, I, I'd like to congratulate you for your amazing work. I've been following you for, uh, for some time now. And I've been seeing how you are so committed with the orthodontics, or with our field. And uh, this is something brilliant. And this, you are brilliant. And, and keep up with this good job. OK? Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you so much, my friend. Take care. I hope you guys have enjoyed this episode of Orthodontics in Interview. Please do subscribe and look forward to the next episode.